Wasbiru inna Allah ma'as-sabirin. Persevere, for God is with those who endure. Patience is one of the greatest attributes one can be blessed with. It is best described as being steadfast in the face of misfortunes and is also defined as compelling oneself to adhere to the necessities of religion, including what is prohibited and what is permissible. Patience is one of the strongest manifestations of faith. You cannot be faithful without being patient. The concept of patience is to be, to have um, restraint, to be able to control, to be able to bear the trials and the tribulations in the way of Allah. The Holy Prophet says that if you want to know someone's Iman, then you see it through their patience. The first patience is the patience where you are in a state of satisfaction that you do not transgress. So for example, when you talk about uh, Nabi Ayyub, Nabi Ayyub had a family of many children. He had many properties. He had a lot of land. He had a lot of gardens. And he had a lot of wealth. And he was very happy with his family, with his situation. Allah wanted to test him. So Allah started taking slowly one thing by the other. One day there was a misfortune and he lost all his children. The other day, there was a misfortune and he lost his land. The third day, when there was a misfortune for him and he became very unwell, he became so sick, he became so unwell that people could not go near him because he developed a disease that caused bad odor. It caused bad odor from, the, from his body and it became so difficult for people to even visit him. So he went out of the town. The second type of patience is the patience of barring oneself from committing evils. So it is the patience required for piety, for taqwa, that when there's a situation that arises where I am tempted to commit an act of haram, then I must remain patient and strong on my principles and not sell myself for something that I know is not good for me and not pleasing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In more than 70 places in the Holy Quran, Allah refers to the virtues of patience. The Quran Karim says that one of the qualities of those who have Iman is that they uphold patience in their life. Quran Karim also orders and says, Fasbar kama sabara ulul azmi min al rusul. Have patience in the way that those great all the Azim prophets would have patience in their lives. According to the Holy Quran, when you go through hardships, difficulties, you see, uh, you know, the Holy Quran uses the word, um, that give the good news to the people who have patience. What is patience? So Allah SWT says that uh, we will try them in wealth, in um, uh, giving, taking away lives from them, meaning so death is losing wealth. You will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran in several places the, the fact that He loves people who are patient. He is with people who are patient. So we have, for example, in the ayah in the Holy Quran, Surah Anfal, which says, Inna Allah ma'asabirin. Allah is indeed with the patient. We also got another uh, ayah in the Holy Quran, and this is Ali Imran, which says, Wallahu yuhibbul, yuhibbul sabirin. Wallahu yuhibbul sabirin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making very clear that this is a quality of sabr, of patience, which is very important. Different riwayat speaking about the different categorizations of sabr and patience. When we look at the lives of the Anbiya and scholars, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would raise certain prophets higher than others in status due to the amount of patience that they would have. When Quran speaks about the ulul azm, there's a difference 
of opinion as to whether all al azm are eight prophets, are five prophets, are nine prophets, and there's a difference as to who those prophets of God are. One of the explanations of all al azm was that these are those prophets who had more patience and perseverance than others. And so we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make a certain prophet greater in status due to the sabr and patience. The Holy Quran is replete with examples. If you look at the example of Nabi Ayyub, what trials and difficulties did he not face in his life? And in the end, Allah rewarded him. Allah rewarded him by taking away, taking him out of all these difficulties. We have, in fact, the actual opposites mentioned to us in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, We shall indeed test you with a lack of food, of wealth, perhaps the death of a loved one, and give glad tidings to the patient ones because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them and he is with the patient. For example, Ya'qub alayhi salam, the father of Yusuf sallallahu alayhi, in a story mentioned in his life, a person came to him and said, Ya Khalil Allah, how are you? Now Khalil Allah is the, the title of Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi, not Nabi Ya'qub. And Ya'qub sallallahu alayhi was the grandson of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Nabi Ya'qub alayhi salam said, what do you mean how is Khalilullah? He said, aren't you Ibrahim al-Khalil? He said, no, that was my grandfather. He said, uh, but you have all of these white hairs, you have aged. I thought that you are Ibrahim alayhi salam. So even a prophet of God, he doesn't like it when someone, according to this rawaya, when someone says that he looks older than he is. So Ya'qub alayhi salam at that moment then went to tell that person and complained to that person about all of the trials and tribulations that he had faced. I was kicked out of this place, I had to move from here, the people uh, dealt with me in such a way, I had all of these trials and tribulations. After this encounter had finished, Ya'qub alayhi salam is of course a prophet of God. He realized that one of the qualities of someone that is patient and sabir is that when they have trials and tribulations, they don't complain to anyone about their trials and tribulations other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he says that I made a mistake, I shouldn't have done that. Which is why the riwayah says that when then, a few years later, Yusuf alayhi salam is taken away from him, he never complains to anyone about those number of years where he's separated from his son. He says, Wa asafa ala Yusuf. He doesn't complain to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the qualities of the Anbiya was that their patience included them not complaining about their problems to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. History gives us a wonderful example in the character of Lady Zainab who embodied the virtues of patience and compassion. Her endurance in the face of injustice and oppression shows us that she was truly the daughter of her father, Imam Ali ibn Abu Talib salam. From a tender young age, misfortune befell Lady Zainab, beginning with the death of her mother, Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra salam. From this point in her life, her struggles would deepen as she witnessed the martyrdom of the men and women of Karbala, including her family members and her own children. With a colossal patience, Lady Zainab faced many trials and tribulations during the Battle of Karbala, which no doubt makes her the epitome of patience. One of the shining examples of patience is Sayyidah Z Zainab alayhi salam. Lady Zainab when she was born in Medina, in five after Hijrah, the first thing that happens is that Jibreel comes to the Holy Prophet and starts weeping. And when the Holy Prophet asks Jibreel, why are you weeping on the birth of my granddaughter Zainab? And Jibreel ex explains that this child is going to go through various trials and tribulations. Uh, Sayyidah Zainab uh, has a completely different level of sabr, patience. No one can be compared to her today. 
In fact, uh, the patience she has shown uh, is an uh, exemplary patience that even the Imams السلام, have praised her. Zainab bint Amir al-Mu'mineen is born according to most historians in the fifth or sixth year after Hijrah at the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Az-Zahra sallallahu alayha and the historical reports speak about the excitement that took place in the household with Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein being very young when their sister Zainab sallallahu alayha is born uh, when growing up in Medina the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa played a major role in her upbringing and her grand Mother, especially Umm Salama, uh, uh, ta'ala anha, um, and especially some of the other uh, household ladies like her grandmother, Fatima bint Asad, uh, you know, so, so, so all of these ladies played a major role in upbringing um, uh, Zainab Salama. Also, her older two brothers uh, played a role in, uh, in, uh, in her upbringing because, like children, also want to hold their younger siblings and they live by an example so they set a very beautiful example for her um, and the holy prophet وسلم, named her and gave her uh, some of the best upbringings lady zain was like a mother say the fatima alayhi salam she was truthful and honest in her words and conduct thus she earned the epithet as Siddiqa as Sohra, she wholeheartedly committed herself to all the wajibats and mustahabats. Henceforth, Allah chose this name for her. We see many extremely important aspects of the life of Lady Zainab السلام, even from the moment of initiation. So for example, when she was being named, we see a special uh, manifestation of rida, of satisfaction, of taslim, of being uh, happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed in the holy family. Sayyidina Zainab alayhi salam then, in her formative years, spends her life seeing the Prophet of Islam, seeing Az Zahra alayhi salam, seeing Amir al-Mu'mineen, and we're told that she not only is devoted to learning from uh, her parents and grandfather, but also in her life, whether it was in Medina or otherwise, Zainab Salamullah Alayha often represents the infallibles in the case that they weren't present. And that is why we see that she grew to such a great extent and she towered above the universe and that her fruits were eternal. According to one historical report, Lady Zainab had a significant dream. Upon waking from this dream, she went straight to her grandfather, Rasulullah. He seated her in his lap and asked her to relay the dream to him. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I had a frightening dream. There was a terrible wind that made everyone look black and ugly. So I ran towards a great tree and held onto its branches so as not to be swept along by this wind. Then the branches broke and I was lost in the middle of nowhere and that's when I woke up. As the Prophet listened, he couldn't help but burst into tears. Rasulullah explained the dream to his granddaughter. The first branch is your mother Fatima and the second one is your father Ali. The other branches are your brothers Hassan and Hussein. He further explained that the tree represented himself and that his presence in the world would come to an end very soon. The same fate would befall her mother, father and brothers. The blackening of faces represented the blackening of the world and that Lady Zainab's life would be filled with trials and tribulations. She would have these types of conversations with her grandfather, Prophet of Islam, until eventually she has to see the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And as we spoke about, even though she is of a very young age, her ma'rifah is of the highest level. And so she understands what takes place with the Prophet of Islam. She understands 
what the Ummah does to the Prophet of Islam and all of these tragedies of what takes place after with Amir Mu'mineen and the Bay'ah and Az-Zahra unfold in front of the eyes of Zainab salam. And what happens she when her when her when her when the Holy Prophet dies and he leaves this world departs from the world the difficulties that are faced by Ahl al-Bayt are enormous. We have Saqifa, which took place. We have uh, the, the, the way in which Lady Fatima, Zahra alayhi was ill-treated. The, the way in which Imam Ali alayhi was ill-treated by the Ummah. The way in which the inheritance of Lady Fatima Zahra alayhi salam in Fadak has been taken away. Uh, Sayyidah Zainab salam alayhi was only uh, five, five and a half when she lost her uh, grandfather, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, probably six and a half. Um, and when she lost her grandfather, uh, she saw the, uh, on from both her parents' sides, um, difficulties in the sense that they were both going through uh, traumas. Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, had been deprived of his right to rule and her mother Fatima Zahra salam alayhi was deprived of her, uh, of her inheritance. The narrations mention that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam placed his holy cheek upon the newborn's cheek and began to cry heavily until there was an unusual situation where a newborn is in the holy household and everyone is in extreme happiness but we see Rasulullah's tears coming down upon his cheeks. So Lady Fatima alayhi salatu wasalam, she said, Mimma buka'uk la abka Allahu aynak ya abah. She said, what is it that makes you cry? May Allah not make you cry, my father. So he said, Ya binta, ya Fatima, inna hadhihi al-bint satubla bi balaya wa taruddu alayha masaib shatta wa razaya adha. My dearest daughter Fatima, this newborn of yours shall see many calamities and there will be many hard and difficult situations that will be upon her and she will go through many tests and, and tribulations. By the age of seven, she had lost her mother. Now, the household of Amir al-Mu'mineen lacked female role models, essential for the healthy development of a child, especially a young girl. And so it's very clear when a person looks at what takes place after the death of Zahra alayhi salam, that it is a Zainab alayhi salam who fills this void. Not being, of course, like as great as her mother, as Zahra alayhi salam. But whether it would be the issues of uh, women in society, whether it would be to care for those who are uh, at home, Zainab alayhi salam plays a vital role, both inside the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi and outside. Lady Zainab alayhi salam was always with Lady Fatima, her mother, Lady Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. She learned a lot of things from her. She used to see how her mother used to pray for neighbors before praying for people of the house. Hazrat Zainab Sallallahu had to go through all of uh, the atrocities uh, with her mother and her mother uh, transferred uh, many of those uh, uh, traditions uh, to us through her daughter. Um, so, the death of her mother, the martyrdom of her mother was uh, very traumatic for her and uh, she, um, she held on to uh, supporting her father, her brothers uh, and the other members of the family. With parents like Sayyidah Fatima and Imam Ali salam, Lady Zainab was nurtured in an Islam-centric household and also mastered all household skills with great proficiency. And we're told that there's this very strong attraction, attraction 
a very strong attraction and affinity that Amir al-Mu'mineen has with his daughters, Zainab and Umm Kulthum, after the death of Az-Zahra to such an extent that when Amir al-Mu'mineen moves from Madinat al-Munawwara to Kufa after he becomes or takes the Khilafah of the Muslimin for four years or so, after he moves there first, he then specifically sends Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein to bring Zainab and Umm Kulthum uh, in the best of envoys from Madinat al-Munawwara to Kufa for he says that I wish to be close and near my daughters because they fill this gap of uh, what was left when Az-Zahra uh, had left this world. And she has the capacity, she has the great soul and the great spirit to benefit from this environment as much as possible. One day she would work and the other day Lady Fiza would work. So she developed this hard working, being very helpful to people in the house, taking care of others within the family by doing work for the house. Uh, she was like uh, a mother to her siblings at the time of the death of her father. And she was the closest uh, daughter to her father. Uh, her father spoke to her and he admonished uh, patience to her and to, her ch uh, to his children. The re resemblance, the close resemblance between the characteristics of Imam Ali salam and Bibi Zainab salam. She resembled Imam Ali salam in faith, being faithful, being full of Iman, in knowledge, in piety, in wisdom and prudence, in valor, in courage, in patience, in magnanimity, which is generosity, generosity to give, give where people want, where people are needy to give. In 40 AH, the night before Friday, the 19th holy month of Ramadan, Imam Ali salam went to the mosque of Kufa for his morning prayers. This marked the day that Ibn Muljan struck the Imam with a fatal blow while the Imam was in sujood. On the 21st of the holy month of Ramadan, 40 AH, Imam Ali salam passed away, leaving his daughter and two sons behind. Lady Zainab's patience was tested once again after the burial of her father. She had said farewell to her grandfather, her mother, and now her father too. Soon after, she returned to Medina with a heavy and broken yet very strong heart. Naturally, the attachment that she has with her father uh, is shown during those last moments of the death of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and the key role she plays in the household of Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi To such an extent that when Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam is struck on the 19th of Shah Ramadan, he is taken straight towards his daughters. And of the people that is said to have always been next to the bed of Amir al-Mu'mineen for those two or three days that he's on his deathbed, is Zainab alayhi salam. One might ask, why did Imam Ali alayhi salam choose to remain for the rest of the night in the house of Lady Zainab before heading to the mosque of Kufa? where his destiny awaited him. And he was spending the time in prayer, in supplication, in rukur and sujood. And Lady Zainab was filling her eyes with the vision of her father's worship. And she told him, my father, why do I see you restless on this night? Why do you not take care of yourself on this night? He said, your father, my dearest one, has killed many warriors and champions in battle and I have never feared but this night I have a fear and he would keep saying inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raja'oon we belong to Allah and to him we return most of the problems that she faced was uh, the um, confrontation of the people of Kufa and Medina to her brothers also that the grave of her father uh, was not exposed to the people, it was hidden, so they could not visit. Uh, third, she had to go back to Medina and leave the grave of her father in uh, Iraq. Uh, fourth, 
um, they had to resettle in Medina after a few years um, and uh, during that time uh, it was the reign of Banu Umayyah that had begun and it was one of the most difficult times for the Ahlul Bayt Salam leading up to Karbala. Imam Hassan, Lady Zainab's oldest brother, became the Caliph of the Muslim Ummah at a time when the persecution of the Shia of Ali was at its most intense and moved to Kufa with his beloved sister and their companions. Imam Hassan was betrayed by his own wife, Ja'ada, who poisoned him under the orders of Mu'awiyah, thus falling prey to the evil machinations of the Umayyad regime. Lady Zainab was once again plunged into grief and sorrow as she witnessed the death of her oldest brother, Imam Hassan alayhi salam. One of the reasons why we call as Zainab alayhi salam as the mother of tragedies and calamities, Umm al masaib is that one after the other, she has to see the atrocities that takes, takes, take place, the atrocities that take place to her loved ones and beloved ones. And so she sees uh, the last moments of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, and the riwayat say that when Imam Hassan salam Allah alayhi is poisoned, and blood comes out of his mouth due to the effect of the poison. This blood was collected in a small container. Imam Hassan, Imam Hassan is next to Imam Hussein Salam Alaihi And as this blood is being vomited from him due to the poison, suddenly they hear the footsteps of Zainab Alaihi Salam. And immediately Imam Hassan Salam Alaihi tells his brother Hussein Salam Alaihi that put away this container or bucket because I do not wish for my sister Zainab to see this blood because it would be tragic on her and painful on her to see the blood of her own brother. This was the connection that they had with one another. And this is how uh, close she is to her brothers and how to see these tragedies was so difficult for Zainab Sallallahu When Al-Hasan saw the tears of Zainab, he said to her, My dearest sister, save your tears for there will be a day that is more befitting for your tears. And that is the day of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam. She was very close to her brothers, and losing her oldest brother was uh, not only just difficult, but because she had to um, uh, help in bringing uh, the children of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. So it was not easy because uh, looking at the children is a reminder of uh, the death or the martyrdom of your close one. And it was at that moment that Lady Zainab said, Wa Hasana, Wa Akha, Wa Qillata Nasira. O oh my brother Hassan, how small is the number of people who helped you? What is this great calamity that has befallen us? However, she was patient and she was forbearant and she stood strongly with her brother, knowing full well that the result of this martyrdom is a great eternal life of pleasure with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then came the greatest tragedy of human history, the tragedy of Karbala. Karbala is inextricably linked to some of the darkest and saddest days of Lady Zainab's life. The last uh, uh, difficult phase uh, of her life was losing Imam Hussain al-Islam, who was the most beloved person to her. Um, uh, she loved him more than anyone else, um, probably um, any of her siblings, anyone probably more than her children. Uh, not only just because he is her brother, but because she knew who he was and what sacrifices he was going to make because of her grandfather informing her and uh, her father informing her and uh, her mother making will to her about um, how to look after Imam Hussain Islam after her death. Very clearly, very obviously, the most difficult moment in her life is what takes place on the 10th of Muharram and those days and what she sees with those own eyes of hers. Lady Zainab alayhi salam experienced unimaginable grief when she witnessed the martyrdom of her brothers, Imam Hussein and Hazrat Abbas alayhum as -salam. 
she not only witnessed everything with her eyes, she witnessed it with her heart, thus reflecting an intensely high level of faith. When she held the body of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, she said, O oh my Lord, accept our humble sacrifice to you. This indicates the patience of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam and the great attribute of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity that Allah had given to sacrifice everything in the way of Allah to Ahlul Bayt, to Imam Sayyid alayhi salam, to Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, to everyone else who had come to Karbala. She was representing the entire, the entire kafila of Imam Sayyid alayhi salam when she was thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, O oh Allah, please accept this sacrifice from us, in, given in your name, given for the sake of Islam, given to save Islam. When she would be in that moment when she sees the last moments of Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi, she looks towards Medina and she says, Assalamu alaykum ya Rasulullah. The malaika of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send their blessings on you this is your same grandson, Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam. Throughout her life, Lady Zainab displayed the highest degree of patience and is famous for her stand against Yazid after the tragedy of Karbala. For example, inside the palace in front of Yazid in Damascus, when Yazid, according to certain reports, tries to get Imam al-Sajjad sallallahu alayhi killed, he orders when he finds out that this is uh, another son of Imam Hussein, he asks him, what is your name? He says, Ali bin Hussein. How many Ali bin Husseins were there? Then Imam Sajjad says that if my father had 1,000 children, he would call all of them by the name of Ali. At that moment, when Yazid tries to get Imam Sajjad alayhi salam killed, and the same things also take place uh, in Kufa, in front of Ibn Ziyad, we're told that it's the courage of Zainab alayhi salam who suddenly covers her nephew Imam Sajjad alayhi salam and she tells them very clearly. In our language today, she says that if you wish to kill the son of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you have to go through me first. And she addresses Yazid ibn Muhammad. Uh, her uh, patience in the court of Yazid um, is, uh, is, a, is the exact example of her mother's role that when she comes to the court of Yazid all the children are now fearful and even the ladies are frightened because you know this is a Yazid who has killed Imam Hussain alayhi salam and their brothers and their husbands their children so ladies alayhi salam stands up and says to all the children that you take refuge behind me and I will protect you all Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam beauty in all aspects inner beauty outer beauty his wisdom, his knowledge, his actions, his speech, his eloquence. From every aspect and every angle, he is beautiful and beautiful beyond measure. Lady Zainab is a perfect reflection, mirroring the beauties of her father in all its aspects. And this has been witnessed and attested to by even her enemies when they saw her and they said she bears a resemblance in her speech and eloquence and strength and willpower to that of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib, for example, when they saw her in Kufa and in Syria when she gave the speech. The human condition is fragile and we will inevitably make mistakes in our lives. Nevertheless, we should strive to fulfill our potential and improve our character, relying on the Ahlul Bayt as our guides. Their lives were filled with tragedy and suffering, yet they never compromised their morals, principles, or belief in God. In fact, uh, the advantage of patience is that it gives you inner strength. It gives you spiritual empowerment. You are able to look at problems and try to deal with the problems in a manner that is calm, that is collected, that is intellectual, that is rational. One of the most important things we take from the life and the story of Az-Zainab is that 
no one could have struggled in the way that she struggled. Being alone in the deserts of Kufa and Sham and Karbala, all of the things that took place. Yet still her patience is so strong. Her belief is so strong. These are very clear lessons for me and you. That when I have these types of trials and tribulations, they were nothing compared to this lady of light, alayhi salam. Yet still when she has such patience that, uh, and such uh, tawakkul and ma'rifah and cognizance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that even when she is in the prisons of Kufa and Sham, she continues her ibadat and nawafil, all of these shows to us that when we then have small tribulations and trials in our life, when a person is patient, the outcome will be like the outcome of Zainab alayhi salam. An outcome where at the end of all the matters. Many people who go through a hard test may find benefit in remembering Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and Lady Zainab alayhi salatu wasalam and cry for them and cry for their calamities. The idea being is that we were told to look and remember and reflect on the trials and tribulations of others to understand that I'm not alone in this. In the trials that I face, I'm not alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the mu'min these trials and tribulations to purify his soul from the defects that may be present. And I have seen myself that crying for Imam al Hussein and for Lady Zainab has a purifying effect on the heart and it gives a soothing, tranquil feeling. From the life of Sayyidina Zainab alayha, we learn that uh, in our own uh, difficult times we have to uh, hold on to Sabr, uh, we must have patience, but um, it, Sabr does not mean that uh, we give in to oppression. We still must speak out against oppression. We must still forbid the evil. We must confront tyranny uh, in personal capacity, in social life. Um, so uh, patience is not to, uh, to forsake our responsibilities, but patience is to uh, uh, to fulfill our responsibilities and duties uh, towards uh, God, towards society, towards um, uh, our personal life. So all of those uh, together make us uh, a patient, a, a, a person with patience. And so Lady Zainab alayhi salam remains Zainab al kubra the embodiment of patience and fortitude. We can begin to appreciate her even more when we take the time to reflect upon the titles conferred upon her by Allah. If we want an example of patience and endurance against injustice and oppression, we only have to turn our faces towards the Holy Lady, Sayyida Zainab al-Kubra alayhi salam. We will never forget the legendary words she uttered, I see nothing but beauty.